you've spent, you've done drawings, all the ideas, you've now got a bit of paper, you've sketched it all out. All you've got to do now is make it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so how does that work? Because <laughs> that must be the that must be the easy part, right? Because the hard part must be drawing it. Hmm. Well, I don't think that the people that are helping me make it would probably agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually turned out to be the hardest computer-generated model that we've ever created. Really? Mm -hmm. yeah. Why is it? It's because very complicated. Because you, obviously, you make jewellery. Mm -hmm. right? You don't make whiskey bottles. So this, is this a first for you? Have you done this before? I've never done a whiskey bottle. No. Mm -hmm. All right. But the process is very similar. And the glass really is a side creation of what we make of the cage metal effect anyway. So it should technically all be quite straightforward, but when we got into the model, as you've seen in the pictures, it's got lots of strands all crossing over each other and winding under round things and the different layers um, and the writing and all these different things. So to create that um, in a precise model that will work for production, um, and then be hand finished around an object that's slightly changing every time it pops out, such as glass, is a very difficult thing to do well. You're not filling me full of confidence. <laughs> <laughs> you say, you well, say, Derek, you should be filling me full of whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> so you say, so it's, in theory, this should, all, this should all work. So we've only got a couple of months oh, before, it'll work. before lunch. Uh, for lunch? For lunch. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, you're, everyone's okay. Oh, yeah, it'll work. With metal, it's always fixable, it's always finishable. Um, it's such a moving, changing organism. It's metal, to me, is almost alive. Um, and you can do anything to it, so I'm not concerned. And the, the quality of the craftsmen that we're working with is so great that they can, they can build anything. I mean, from, I can see a picture in front of me. Mm -hmm. Now, that's red. <laughs> it's red? It's not, it's not, the glass isn't red, right? No, that's the glass will not be red. Good, that's fine. It shall reveal the true colour of the whiskey. So, so, so when you get to this stage, is this the point where you actually physically hand it over? Because you, you've once you've designed something and measured it and did it, sorry if I'm just speaking in idiots' terms, but once you've measured it, everything's everything's perfect. You physically must give it give it to somebody and go right. I'm ready. Go and. You'd think so, yes, but when you're a perfectionist control freak, things don't always work that way. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> but we, um, we have, I work directly with um, a computer created, like a CAD, CAD person who yeah. creates that model, um, and we work very closely on a daily basis of every aspect. Um, and he basically s scans in my drawing <coughs> um, to, to 3D and then starts building the line work around that. Um, and then slowly but surely it comes 3D and then you have lots of choices about, like I said, where lines cross over and how the actual thing comes to life um, and then how the joinings will look and where the little connector points will be and how you'll finish all these details. So those things, for something like this where it's such a unique um, vision for me, I really um, have to be involved in the process. Um, and so obviously because I'm also a, a metalsmith myself, I know what the end object it should look like. Um, and I'm working with a couple of people who I've worked with for a long time who are extremely capable and very talented. So if you... I mean, how, how, <laughs> this is so different, so unusual from, from what I normally do, but... Wait, so Jerry, I thought you said you were helping to polish them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, only, that's only so I get a free one at the end. That's, 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 the, that's the only reason. But so, what's, what's the hardest part? What's, what's been the hardest part of this whole entire project for you? I mean, is there, was it the drawings? Was it, was it physically, physically having to sit with me and drink whiskey for, for a bit to understand what the whiskey was about? Was it flying around Orkney to taking photographs for your inspiration? Or is it going to physically come down to the hard bit at the end where you have a bit of glass that moves, a bit of metal that moves, mm -hmm. and then trying to get every single one to be just perfect? Mm -hmm. What's the bit? Well, I think the stage where it can most lose your dream of what you want it to look like is definitely the translation from paper to model. Um, but that, it's taken us about six times longer than we planned it to be, but right. it worked out perfectly. So that stage is now conquered, and the next stage is to definitely, the next hardest stage is to get it um, to, to all come together. But I've, I've no qualms that will make that absolutely perfect. So when it comes into polishing, how long does it take to physically polish one of these things? It takes a long time. It probably takes a day to make each piece. I mean, because of the because of the colour that's involved, I suppose mm -hmm. it must be very difficult to make sure that there's that, you know, almost consistency. I appreciate that everyone's going to be different, but you're going to it's going to be quite quite 
I just can't imagine how that would work. I mean, well, the beauty of it is it's a limited edition series, so it's completely hand finished, and every piece will be slightly different because it's handcrafted, um, and there's no way that it would be consistent with the next bottle. So for me, that's the beauty of a piece. It's very similar to the way that we create jewelry. So no two pieces are the same. It's really uniquely your piece. So the one that you purchase, nobody else will have a piece that looks identical because we're using this oxidized finish and then rubbing it back yeah. to reveal the true color of the metal. Um, and it's a natural state metal, which was really important for me to use that because it goes along with Helen Park's um, ideal, they never have any caramel added and you, you always use a pure colour whiskey. So for me it had to be a pure colour metal, there was not going to be any plating involved, there was not going to be any patination that would change the natural state of the metal itself. So all we're doing is blackening it so, blackening it so it looks aged and then showing the true lines and highlights of that piece coming back when we rub it back. And we're also going to be including uh, a cloth, a polishing cloth in the actual box itself so that the, the owner can um, care for the piece itself um, over time and it will last forever without changing. So when, when the, for me, when somebody buys a 50 year old whiskey, when I, I've tried collecting whiskey. I just get it just doesn't it just doesn't happen. And if I do get it, I have to put it in the basement or in the loft of my house as far away at the back as possible because I know that come Saturday night, I know what we'll do, <laughs> and I regret it in the morning, but it, it's there. So once hazard of the job, hazard really. of the job. So once people have hopefully drunk the whiskey, because that's why we make whiskey to drink. What do you want them to do with the the uh, the glass and the, the mould? What do you hope that they do with the bottle? Well, uh, it depends on the buyer. I would personally drink it but then I would use the bottle again and I would put something in it that I love to drink on a daily basis so that the object was out there and it was being yeah. used and celebrated um, for all of its unique handcrafted glory. That's it. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you yeah. and I, I can't, I'm just not a collector, I just haven't managed to crack that bit in my head yet. <laughs> <laughs> I will, I will and I do, have, I do have stuff but it's, I just end up drinking it. That's what, it's, that's what it's for. That's what it's for, Speaking yeah. of which, I know you've been, your hand's been going back and forth a couple of times. So that Jenny, you're stringing me along you've, here. You've, <laughs> Let's you've, get to the point. You've not tasted it yet, have you? <laughs> nope. Right, you can have that now. Do that's you know how difficult it was to do this project without tasting? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you've said it about 100 times. <laughs> All those emails, when am I getting my free bottle? <laughs> you're not getting one, mate. <laughs> have a couple glass. Anyway, enjoy that. Thank you for your help. Slandra. Cheers. Cheers. Scott. It's lovely stuff, isn't it? Okay, cut. This shouldn't be on camera. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty fantastic. Mm -hmm. That's pretty amazing. <laughs>